cannot be used against you, but you will be required to answer all relevant questions. Do you understand that? Yes, Your Honor. Right. Anything else you want to make? No, Your Honor. Thank you. All right. Uh, anything else? Yes, sir. All right. Has the secretary finished? Yes. All right, please introduce yourself and spell your name. My name is Wendy Adelson, W-E-N-D-I-A-D-E-L-S-O-N. How are you employed, Ms. Adelson? I'm an attorney. All right, and do you know... Uh, just a little bit, if you would, please, ma'am. All right. I'm an attorney. All right. How were you employed back in 2014? I was employed at FSU Law School. Okay. And were you a member of the Florida Bar at that time? I was. All right. And do you know, did you know Dan Markell? Yes, I did. How did you know Mr. Markell? He was my husband. When did you meet him? We met in 2004. And when did you marry? We married in 2006. Did you ever live in Tallahassee? I did live in Tallahassee. When did you first move to Tallahassee? We moved to Tallahassee in, 2000, in the fall, August of 2005, and we lived in Tallahassee that academic year, so from 2005 until the summer of 2006, and then we spent a year living in Miami from 2006 to 2007, mm -hmm. and then I lived back in Tallahassee from 2007 to 2014. Okay. Why did you move to Tallahassee the first time? Um, the first time we moved to Tallahassee for Danny's job. He got a job at FSU Law School. All right, and what about the second time? And the second time we moved back to Tallahassee because he had tried to get a job at University of Miami Law School and it didn't work out. All right. So both times it was for his employment? Yes. Okay. Did you like living in Tallahassee? I did. All right. And did you live on Trescott Drive? We did. That was that was our home. And where are you from, Ms. Adelson? I'm from Broward County originally. Okay, and do you have family members in Broward currently? I have one family member in Broward. Um, where do you live currently? Or you can just tell us. I live in Miami-Dade County. And what about your parents? Where do they live? They currently live in Miami-Dade County. All right, and what about your brother, Charles Adelson? He lives in Broward County. All right. And do you have any children? I do. And how many children do you have? I have two children. What are their ages? They are 10 and 8, turning 9 soon. Okay, both boys? Both boys. And both the biological children of Dan Markell? Yes. <clears throat> How is your, are your family members employed, specifically your parents and your brother? Um, my mom is not currently working very much. She helps <coughs> out with my dad's office, 
My dad is a dentist, and my brother, Charlie, is a periodontist. And does your family have a dental practice in South Florida? They do. That they own and operate? They do. Okay. Is your family in South Florida wealthy? I know it's a relative term. Are you asking me to speculate? No, I'm asking if they're wealthy. You may, if you don't know, you say you don't know. It depends how you define wealthy. Okay. Are they millionaires? No. Uh, when did you separate from Mr. Markell? We separated in the fall of 2012. And was part of the reason for your disagreement or separation uh, having to do with how to raise the children in terms of your faith? Yes, we, we had different ways of practicing our faith. Do you know when you filed for divorce? I believe it was the fall of 2012. Okay, 9, 10, 2012 sound right to you? That sounds right. And when you separated initially in the fall of 2012, did you move to South Florida with the kids? No, I did not. You didn't go to South Florida with the kids? No, I did not. Okay. Was it your desire during that time to move with the children to South Florida? I would say right then, no, it wasn't. Are you familiar with a court order ordering you to come back to Tallahassee from South Florida? I'm not familiar with that. When you moved out from the marital home there on Trescott Drive, you lived at another residence in Tallahassee, is that correct? I did. And do you recall the address there? I do. 3303 Aqua Ridge Way. Okay. And... Was there a time during the time that you were living there at Aqua Ridge, Aqua Ridge that you determined that you would like to move to South Florida with the children? There was. All right. And were your parents very involved in trying to facilitate that relocation? My parents were supportive of me moving to South Florida. Would you describe your parents as being over-involved in your personal business? As compared to other people's parents? Yeah. I don't know. What was the child custody schedule when you were living at Aqua Ridge? And I assume Mr. Markell continued to live in the marital home on Trescott. He did. Okay. What was the custody situation with the kids? So the custody situation changed over time and depending on the part of the year. But I think... In the beginning, we would we would do a Wednesday night overnight. We had it was about 50/50 shared custody, but I, I don't remember the exact arrangement. I do remember in the summertime it would switch to week on week off, but during the school year it was slightly different. So still 50/50, but not necessarily every other week. It was mixed up within the week. It was okay. And you mentioned that you did develop a desire to move to South Florida. Did you file a motion to that effect on January 14th, 2013? That sounds, that sounds, I did file a motion. I don't remember the exact date. Okay. But that sounds about right. All right. And in that motion, did you make some allegations that Mr. Markell was making things difficult for you at work? I did. Okay. And was that motion granted or denied? That motion was denied. All right. Denied with prejudice? I don't remember. Okay. If you have it, you can... I'm happy to take a look. Okay. But in any event, you were not able to move at that time. I did not move. <clears throat> and were you upset about being stuck in Tallahassee? I was relieved. You were relieved. You wanted to stay in Tallahassee. I was happy at my job. Do you recall when your divorce to Mr. Markell became final? The summer of 2013. Okay, July 31st sound about right? That sounds right. Okay. 
Would you consider your divorce with Mr. Markell to be a nasty divorce? I think most divorces aren't very pleasant. Okay, but this one was, like, really unpleasant, right? I found getting divorced to be unpleasant, yes. And in the litigation that ensued between the two of you, you guys argued over things as small as a tennis racket, I noticed in one pleading. I don't remember that. Did he threaten to press kidnapping charges against you? Objection here, sir. Overruled. I don't remember, remember that? that. No. Did he threaten to go after your law license? Remember I, that? I don't remember that, no. Do you remember him saying you failed to disclose a bunch of assets in the divorce process? I do remember that. Okay, did you guys have any mediations as part of your divorce? We did have mediations leading up to settlement. Two eight-hour mediations, correct? I don't remember how long they were, but they seemed very long. Yeah, and they both did not result in a resolution? They did not. All right, but you did reach a settlement, I think kind of just on the eve of a trial on the matter, correct? That sounds right. Do you remember this motion that was filed by your deceased ex-husband on March 26, 2014, involving, uh, it, among other things, that had to do with your mother, an allegation that your mother was disparaging the children? Objection. I'm sorry. Overruled. Disparaging him to the children is what I meant to say. Are you familiar with that pleading? I am familiar with that pleading. All right. And in that pleading, did he allege that you were depriving him of physical access to the children? I don't remember the specifics. Do you recall whether he was complaining about you refusing to communicate with him about right of first refusal to the children during your time with them? I know he was frustrated about the Skyping. Mm -hmm. Lack of communication via Skype. It's hard to Skype children. with with two toddlers, yes. All right, and um, in that motion, do you recall him being upset about an allegation that you let the kids eat non-kosher foods? I remember him being upset about that in general, but I don't remember whether it was an emotion or not. What does that mean, non-kosher foods? Um, so kosher rules have to do with the separation of milk and meat, or dairy and, and meat, um, <clears throat> So non-kosher foods would be meat that hasn't been killed in a way that conforms with Jewish law, um, or the mixing of the two. And is observing those types of eating habits something that's important to you? It is not important to me. And was it something that was important to Dan Markell? It was important to Danny. And it was important to him that the children observe the, that way of eating, correct? It was. And in that motion, did he seek to restrict your mother's contact with the kids to supervised visits only? I, d I don't remember, but if you'd like to show me the motion, I can take a look. Okay, but you don't remember that portion? No. All right. Do you remember the allegation that your mother made statements to the children that Grandma hates you? Overruled. Grandma says you're stupid, your father is trying to take my sunshines away, anything like that, do you recall? No, but again, I'm happy to look at it if you'd like to show me. I understand. Um, do you recall that Mr. Markell was seeking sanctions against you personally in that motion? I don't remember that. Do you know whether this would have been a motion that you would have shown to your mother? Would she have been aware of it? I probably would have shown my mom the motion. Is it fair to say that your parents are very protective of you? I think that's fair to say. Is it fair to say that your brother is very protective of you? I think that's fair to say. Okay. Um, what about Dan Markell? Did your family like him? Do you want to specify a point in time? Um, well, I'm specifically thinking of a statement you made in the interview after his death where you indicated that your parents were very angry with him. Is that accurate? At that point in time, during our divorce, I, I do think they were angry with him. They felt like he had treated me badly. And the motion to preclude your mom from having unsupervised contact with your kids, that was still pending at the time of his murder, correct? That's possible. I mean, I, I don't think anyone took that motion very seriously. Okay. Did your mom take it seriously? I don't think so. 
Did Dan Markell take it seriously? I don't know how Danny felt about a motion. If he wrote the motion, he was probably taking it seriously. I want to approach with some emails. Have you had an opportunity to review States Exhibit 80? Your Honor, can I see what the States is? What's that? I'm going to request a sidebar on this one. The letter is in. Okay. Uh, for this is State's Exhibit 80. Just take a moment and flip through and make sure this is the exhibit you seen previously. I've been shown these exhibits. Okay. And are these exhibits uh, fair and accurate copies of emails between yourself and your mother, Donna? They are. And the email addresses on this exhibit, Donna Harvey at gmail.com. Whose address is that? My parents have a joint email address. Okay, but you were communicating with one of them in particular and these emails, right? Whoever signed the email, but it, it could be from either or both of them. Okay, either could have used it, but we can deduce from who signed it who this one was from. That sounds right. Okay, and Wendy Adelson at gmail.com, is that you? That is me. Judge, at this time I ask to move into evidence. We'll go Let me give a, a brief legal um, explanation to the jury. You've heard a number of hearsay objections about things that were said by Mr. Markle, things that are in these emails by uh, another person who may not be testifying. Um, normally, we refer to those things as hearsay, and they're um, not allowed without the person actually testifying, but there are a whole bunch of exceptions to that. And one of the exceptions to that is when it's not being offered to prove that what's said is true, but simply to show that it has been said because there's some relevance to uh, the fact that these statements were made. Um, so I am not offering these statements to show they're true these persons, I mean, obviously Mr. Markle can't be here for us to have cross-examination of him. We don't anticipate that um, the other Ms. Adelson will be here as a witness. We can't test. The attorneys will not be able to test that to see whether that's true or not, but I am allowing it for limited purposes to show state of mind of these persons. So you may proceed, Ms. Kaplan. I noticed in the emails that your mother referring to, who I think is Dan Markell, as Jibbers. What does that mean? Jibbers was a nickname that I gave Danny when he was 
being really difficult and causing me a lot of pain was sort of a nickname I gave him to make him feel less threatening. So it was a derogatory thing? I wouldn't say it was derogatory. Did you call him that to his face? No, I called him Danny to his face. Okay. And gibbers would be what? How would you spell that? I don't know that I ever spelled it out. Um, in the emails, I think it's spelled with a J, but I guess you could spell it with a G. J-I-B-B-E-R-S. That would be one way to spell Ms. Adelson, you had Mr. Markell's phone number programmed into your phone as J-I-B-B-E-R-S, didn't you? That's right. Do you know much about your brother Charles Adelson's business practices? I know that he does implant surgery. Mm -hmm. Do you know anything about whether he offers discounts for cash or does a lot of business in cash? I have no idea. Do you know if there's a safe in your parents' house that has stacks of cash inside? I don't know about a safe with stacks of cash. So you don't have a stack of cash in your parents' safe that's <laughs> Wendy's stack? No. Okay. Um, did Charlie Adelson like Dan Markell? And again, I'm referring to the time frame before his death. I mean, I think he was also, he would listen to me when I would tell him about things I was upset about at the time with the divorce. So whether he liked him or didn't like him, he certainly was supportive of me. Okay, but he never expressed any dislike? No. Did he mention hiring a hitman to kill your husband? Objection here, sir. No. Did he ever joke about he looked into hiring a hitman, but buying you a TV as a divorce present would be cheaper? He did make that joke. He tended to repeat himself, and sometimes he would make jokes that weren't very funny about all kinds of things. All right, and was that TV, did he buy you a TV as a divorce present? He did. And was that TV the same TV that was being repaired at your residence at the time that your husband was murdered? It was. Who made the arrangements for that TV repair? I did. Your mom didn't make those arrangements? I don't believe so. And the repairman was at your house that morning that your husband died between 8.30 and 9.15. Do you agree with that? I remember he was supposed to come between 8 and noon, and then he ended up coming on the early side. That's when he arrived, between 8.30 and 9.15? It's my best recollection. Did Charlie ever say that he considered all possible options to take care of the problem, the problem being Dan Markell? Objection here, sir. I just have a standing objection, so I don't keep Did he ever say that? No. After the murder of Mr. Markell, did Charlie Adelson take you out for a celebration dinner? No. Do you recall any dinner where you, shortly after Mr. Markell's death where you were with Mr. Charlie Adelson and vomited? I, I do remember that dinner. Yes. I... I'm sorry? Go ahead, I interrupted you. After, after Danny died, I was terrified that someone was going to come after me or my children and harm us as well. And so I didn't leave my house for about a month. And when I finally felt ready to leave the house and have dinner, I told my brother that I wanted, I wanted to have dinner, that I was ready to finally go to a restaurant and, and eat a meal again. And I'd barely eaten for a full month, just out of grief and shock. And so that night when I finally ate for the first time, they, they ended up taking a while before they sat us and they sat us at the bar and I had a drink and I wasn't used to eating anything or drinking alcohol and I threw up at the table the only time in my life I've done something like that, but it was certainly not a celebration. And you never heard your brother referred to it in that way? No. Okay. Were you involved in any way in a plot to kill Dan Markell? No. 
Do you have any knowledge other than the statements you said your brother made or the jokes your brother made? Do you have any knowledge of anyone being involved in a plot to kill your husband? No. Do you know Catherine Magbanwa? I have met her before. How do you know her? We met one time at dinner when I came home and my brother introduced me to her. And I think we might have gone to the beach once with her and a friend for a few hours. Let me show you what I've marked as States Exhibit 36. With her friend, yes. Okay, and do you remember the friend's name? I don't. All right, is this a fair and accurate photograph from that event? That looks like the three of us at the beach, yes. Do you recall when this was taken? I don't. Okay, does Father's Day weekend 2014 sound correct? So June 2014, that's yes, possible. All right, would it refresh your memory to look at the data associated with that photograph? Sure. Okay. It looks like it was taken on June 15th, 2014. Alright, and do you know where the photo was taken? I think that's South Beach. Uh, close to where your parents were living in the condo? Yes. And did you say how you know Ms. Magdalena? I She was dating my brother. He'll be admitted. I'm the one in the middle. The one on the left hand side to the right of me in the photo. Right. And this one was her friend? Yes. Her. Yes. Approach and show you one more photo. This is at 37. Recognize this photo? I don't recognize that photo, but I recognize the people in it. Okay, who's in it? That's my brother, and I think that's Katie. Yes. That looks right. Judge, at this time it asked me if it was stakes 37. Is there a pick? Yes, Your Honor. This witness is not able to properly authenticate that picture in terms of when it was taken and uh, where it was taken. So I would object to that. Your brother dated Catherine Magbanwa? Yes. Okay. And was that the context in which you? became acquainted with her, was through your brother? Yes.
Do you know when they began seeing each other, your brother and Ms. Magvanwa? I have no idea. Do you know when they stopped seeing each other? I have no idea. Do you know whether the relationship between your brother and Ms. McBanewell was a serious relationship? I met many, many girlfriends of my brother's over the years. I, I didn't get any indication that it was a serious relationship. Okay. He's a guy that has a lot of girlfriends. He has had a lot of girlfriends. How many girlfriends has he had since Catherine McBanewell? I have no idea. Several? Probably. And does he have a child with someone now? He does have a child. How old is your brother? 43. Has he ever been married? No. Do you know whether your brother makes a practice of giving gifts to his former girlfriends? I have no idea. Are you aware of any specific gift he's ever given to a former girlfriend? No. Do you know Sigfredo Garcia? No. Have you ever met him? No. I want to ask you about the week prior to Mr. Markell's murder, uh, like June 30th through July 10th, 2014. Were you in South Florida that week? I know I was in South Florida for my father's 70th birthday. My dad's birthday is July 5th. Mm -hmm. I don't remember if his party was on his actual birthday or a little before or a little after, but I remember I went down for his birthday. Can you tell the jury whether or not you were in South Florida on July 1st, 2014? I couldn't say for sure. Okay, but it would I may be have traveled that day. I don't remember exactly when I went down. I only remember I was there for probably about a week and that I went down for my dad's birthday. But I couldn't tell you more exactly than that. Your dad's birthday's on the 5th? It is. What month? Of July. Was Mr. Markell planning to leave town the day after he was murdered? I believe he was. Do you know where he was going? I believe he was going to New York to visit his girlfriend. And how? To visit his girlfriend. How old was Mr. Markell when he was killed? Um, he was born in 1972, and he died in July of 2014 for his birthdays in October. He was 41. 41 years old? Yes. Did the did law enforcement in this case analyze your cell phone? I, I gave them my cell phone. Okay. And, and in your cell phone, you have some contacts for uh, Donna Adelson, Harvey Adelson, and Charlie Adelson, as well as Jibbers who we've established is uh, Dan Markell. Are all the phone numbers in your phone for them accurate phone numbers for those folks? I would imagine so. And I want to ask you about um, some recorded phone calls that were taken in association with this case. Did you have an opportunity to review a, a disc of some of those phone calls? I did. The phone calls weren't played. Oh, I'm sorry, hold on just a minute. Yeah. All right, so I, I provided you with a disc, correct? Yes. And uh, a list of the specific phone calls and the voices on the specific phone calls that I was asking you whether you could identify. Yes. All right. And did you initial next to the letters of those calls that you were able to identify? I did. Right, I'm going to approach and show you States Exhibit 175. 175. I just wanted to clarify that we didn't listen to the phone calls from beginning to end for each one, but that we were able to listen to parts of the phone calls so that we could authenticate who was speaking on the phone call. Okay, and when you say we, who are you referring to? Myself and my attorney. Okay. So you listen to you felt another phone call in order to be able to tell me whose voice was on the call? That's right. Okay. 
and when you initial next to uh, the highlighted portions, okay, I guess I should say the calls are listed by letter and number, each call, and then uh, I have highlighted the names that I am asking you to authenticate. Is that correct? That's correct. All right, and if you've initialed next to that call, does that signify that you were able to authenticate that the highlighted names on that call were the voices of those people? Correct. Okay, so namely uh, Donna Adelson and Charlie Adelson, correct? Correct. Judge, at this time I'd ask to move into evidence states 175. There's an objection from the second judge. I can't. Your legal objection? Uh, Your Honor, I think it would require a speaking objection, so I'm not sure how you'd like to handle it. State your legal objection. The legal objection is going to be relevant at this point as improper foundation. Alright, I'll overrule that objection. No, admit. Say significant 175. I want to talk about your location on the day of Mr. Markell's murder. Um, you know that law enforcement looked at your phone and sort of looked at your movements that day? Yes. Okay. And um, the, it, that information indicates you were home at the Aqua Ridge residence at approximately 1227 in the afternoon that day. Is that correct? I don't remember exactly what time, but that, that sounds right. I know I had left to meet some friends for lunch, so mm -hmm. I guess it was, I had left, I was home until that time, that sounds right. All right, so it seems like kind of around lunchtime, about half afternoon. Sure. All right, and then shortly after that, at 1229, um, it appears you were traveling on Centerville Road. Is that a normal way that you would ingress and egress from your Aqua Ridge residence? That sounds right. All right, and when you left there, when you left your residence, you said you were going to lunch. Did you go directly to lunch? No, I stopped and made a purchase for a party that I was supposed to attend first. And what was that purchase? It was it was my first time purchasing bourbon. It was for um, it was for a like a not a bridal shower. It was for a, a bachelor. No, it was for a wedding party, but it was the bride and groom together, and they had mm -hmm. asked for people to buy certain alcohol to help them. Like a stock the bar party. A stock the bar party. I forgot yeah. what it's called. Okay. And do you remember what type of bourbon you purchased? I don't. Um, does bullet bourbon sound familiar? Maybe. It was, right. they had a list of what they wanted, and so I asked the person at the store if they had <coughs> whatever kind it was. Okay. And do you recall where you went to purchase the alcohol? I think I, I went on Thomasville Road at um, ABC Liquor. Okay. Is there a reason you went to that particular store? No, I just, I don't know many liquor stores. That was the first one that popped up. All right. And you made that purchase according to the receipt that was in your vehicle at 1249. Does that sound about right to you? That sounds right. Okay. And did you make any stops between leaving your residence and going to the liquor store? Did I, maybe I purchased gas? Uh, I don't know if you did or not, but I'm referring to your visit to the crime scene. I did not visit the crime scene. Okay. You did not pull up to the crime scene tape on Trescott Drive? No. I was driving on Centerville Road, and sometimes I would take the shortcut through Trescott. Yes, ma'am. But when I was driving on Centerville Road, I saw some sort <coughs> of tape or obstruction, and so I didn't turn. Okay. And then you went from the liquor store straight to the restaurant? Mm hmm Yes. Right. And what restaurant was that? What was the name of that restaurant? Mosaic? Mosaic. Okay. Have you seen the photographs that were taken of your vehicle? I have not. That looks like my car. That looks like bourbon, yeah. Who 
had your kids the morning that Mr. Markell was killed? The kids were at preschool. But I mean, who? What? at what home did they wake up that day? That morning, I think they were at Danny's house. Did you stand to gain anything from your husband's death, like financially? No. Do you know how much the lawyers that assisted you with the divorce process and litigation that followed the divorce, do you know how much they cost? How much my lawyers how or much Danny's you spent lawyers? On lawyers? Yeah. I honestly don't remember. Fair to say it was a lot of money? It felt like a lot of money to me. How many different lawyers did you have during the pendency of your divorce and the litigation that followed? I had three. Do you know how many Mr. Markell had? I don't remember. Do you remember your mom suggesting a plan to offer Danny a million dollars to allow the relocation of you and the children to South Florida? Objection, Hansen. Overruled. I'm sure I knew about it at the time that it happened, and then I had my memory refreshed about it recently. Did you ever make the offer to Mr. Markell? No. Did you move to South Florida after their father was killed with the children? So after he was killed, I went to, I packed a weekend bag and went to South Florida for what I thought would be a couple of days, maybe a week. My son's birthday was July 29th and I thought we'd be back in Tallahassee by then. Did and you ever come back? I did come back a few times, but not, not permanently. Okay, so you ended up moving there permanently. I wouldn't say it's permanent, but I'm living there right now. Okay. Well, it's been five years. It has been a while. I've been exploring options for employment in many different places. Okay. And when you initially left to go to South Florida, was that the same day as the funeral service for your husband? No. Was it the day after? It might have been the day after or the day after that, I don't remember. Did you change your children's last name from Markel to Adelson? I did. When was that done? So, after Danny died, there was a lot of press coverage. And CNN put pictures of my children's faces unblurred on national television, newspapers put their names without any consideration to the fact that they're children. And I appreciate I thought, that, but the question is when, when did you change their names? When they started school, I registered them under my name, hoping it would keep them safe. Mm -hmm. And, and was then, that approximately a year after their dad was killed? It was whenever I registered Ben for school, so it was, it was soon after. Okay. But I didn't legally change their name until after that. Okay. And where did they start school? When you say you changed their name when they started school, was that here in Tallahassee or somewhere else? No, it was in South Florida. So that fall, they started regular enrollment like you would in the normal beginning of the school year? That's right. Okay. And did you also eliminate your older son's middle name? When I legally changed their names, I did. And you just dropped that from the name? I did. Okay. And that was a name that came from Dan Markell's deceased maternal grandmother, is that correct? The name started with an A, which was to honor my grandfather, Aaron Adelson, and the second half of his name was to honor Danny's grandmother. Okay. So we lost an honor to both families. Thank you. No further questions. Cross, your seat.
Ms. Adelson, I represent Mr. Garcia, and I'm going to ask you some questions, okay? Okay. Charlie's your older brother or I'm, younger brother? I'm the youngest in the family, so both my brothers are my older brothers. And how many years older is Charlie than you? He's approximately three years older. Would you describe your relationship with your brother as a close relationship? I would. And the brother I'm referring to is Charlie. And just for the record, all the questions that I have with regards to brothers is going to be focused just on your brother Charlie, okay? Okay. Charlie graduated high school? He did. College? He did. Dental school? He did. So he has a substantial educational background? Yes. Would you consider him to be book smart? He did very well in his classes. So that would, that would so potentially be yes. yes. What about street smart? Do you think he was kind of street smart? I think he's good with people. And would it be fair to say that he has a wide range of friends, different types of friends? He has a lot of friends. Would you say, oh, are there certain friends that he goes out nightclubbing with? I don't know. He doesn't talk to me about nightclubbing. Okay. Well, when you have, when he has social events, do you ever go out with him socially? I haven't in a long time. I'm pretty busy with my kids. But I have once or twice gone out with him. And is it the same types of friends that he goes out to, to, the, to, these, to these social events with? He would usually go with his roommate, who's, I, I don't think they're living together anymore, but they lived together for a while. Would you agree with me that uh, your brother Charlie was a, uh, I don't want to call him like a socialite, but he would be, he would frequent the nightclub scene? I honestly don't know that. So your single brother, he's a pretty handsome guy, right? I think he's handsome. Right. We've seen his pictures. Good looking guy. Uh, never been married, right? No. And what kind of car does he have? Um, for a while, what does he have? What is he driving right now? Well, he likes me, cars. Me, like he, he has a lot of cars, right? And these aren't like Hondas or Toyotas. They're Mercedeses and Ferraris, right? He drove an unmarked police car for a while. But that wasn't my question. My question was, does he have a, did he ever have a Mercedes? I think so, yeah. Okay, and it wasn't like a C300. It was like a 5 Series, right? I honestly don't know anything about cars. Well, it was the bigger Mercedes, right? It, yeah, it right. was big. It was the bigger one. And he also had a Ferrari, right? I know he had one really fancy car, but I don't remember what, what brand it was. Okay. So you're telling this jury that you don't remember if your brother had a Ferrari? Cars are really not important to me. You saw mine. <laughs> I drove a minivan. <laughs> well, but you're not your brother, right? I, I am not my brother. And no, you, I knew he had a fancy car. I just don't remember if it was a Porsche or if it was a Ferrari. It was something fancy. Something kind of fancy, yeah. right? Okay. So you have a pretty um, successful brother, right? He's successful, yeah. And he likes to show off his success with his extravagant cars, correct? He likes fancy cars. Okay. Handsome guy. In good shape, right? He's handsome. And you indicated that he had a lot of girlfriends, right? Yes. Now, I know you didn't go clubbing with him, but were you aware that he would go to, like, Miami Beach a lot? I mean, or I... Or South Beach? Sure. I mean, I, I couldn't say how often he went out or where he was going. It's just not something I would really talk to him about. When you when he took your, when your brother took you out to dinner and you vomited, was do you remember what the restaurant was? I do. Which restaurant was it? It's called Uvia. Okay. Where is that located? It's on Lincoln Road. Okay, and Lincoln Road's in South Beach, right? Lincoln Road is in South Beach. Are you aware if your brother took steroids? No, I, I'm not aware if he took steroids. What about if your brother used illicit drugs? I'm not aware of my brother using illicit drugs. And the fact that you're not aware if he used it doesn't mean he didn't use it, correct? No, I'm just saying I don't, I don't know. Do you know when Luis Rivera started serving your brother drugs? I don't know anything about that. Your brother would frequent South Beach and Miami Beach sometimes, correct? I don't know. You don't know? The restaurant that he took you to was in South Beach, correct? I was living 
close to that restaurant at the time. And your your parents had a home in South Beach also, correct? My parents did not have a home in South Beach. They were so, renting an apartment. I'll rephrase it. They had a place to stay in South Beach, correct? Correct. Good afternoon, Ms. Adelson. Good afternoon. How are you doing today? You doing okay? <laughs> I'm fine. You nervous? Am I nervous? Yeah. Yeah, some nervous. Okay. Um, now, you stated on direct examination that you are a lawyer. I am a lawyer. Right. So you understand that the, the oath that you took before you took the stand, correct? Yes. Um, you know the consequences of not being truthful here. Of course. And you also have a separate obligation as an attorney to tell the truth, right? Of course. Now, do you know who killed Dan Markell? No. Did your brother have anything to do with killing Dan Markell? I don't believe so. Your mother is Donna Adelson? She is. Where is she right now? Right now, she's with my children. In? Not in, in Tallahassee? In Miami. Okay. She's not in jail? No. She's never been arrested before? No. Okay. She's not even testifying in this case, is she? To no. your knowledge? To my knowledge, no. What about your brother Charlie? Is he in Miami right now? He's probably in Fort Lauderdale right now. Okay, but he hasn't been arrested? No. Hasn't been charged? No. And he's not testifying in this case, is he? No. Okay. Are you aware if the state has attempted to subpoena them to come to court? I believe they have received a subpoena to come to court. Okay, and it was for them to come and testify in this trial, or you don't know? I don't know for certain. Okay. But you know they've received some sort form of subpoena? I heard about that. Okay. When is the last time you spoke to your family, your mom in particular? Um, this morning, I called to check in on the boys. Okay. How is your relationship with your parents now? Is it estranged in any way, or you still have a good relationship with your parents? I still have a good relationship. What about your brother, Charlie? I still have a good relationship. When is the last time you spoke to Charlie? Probably last week at some point. Okay. Now, you had mentioned that Charlie is a father. He is. When did he have his child? Is it a boy or a girl? It's a boy. Okay. Um, he was born in December 2017. Okay. Um, so about, I would say that's over a year after Miss McBann was arrested. I couldn't say. Okay. Do you know who the mother of that child is? I do. Who is she? You want her name? Yes. Her name is... Bree Price. Okay. And is he married to her now? He's not married. Are they still together? Depends on the day. <laughs> and do you know if he has any other girlfriends at this point? I have no idea. All right. Have you been keeping up with the media coverage in this case? I don't watch any media related to this case. Okay. So, but you are aware of the attention that has been brought on this case? I'm aware only because of the constant death threats that I receive, yes. Okay. So just to specify, um, you haven't watched any of the specials that have been on air about this case? I have not watched any of them. Do you know if your parents have watched any of the specials on this case? I advise them not to. They may have seen bits of them, but I don't know for certain. What about your brother, Charlie? I don't know. Did you watch the state's opening statement in this case? I did not. You did not? I did not. Okay. So you're not aware of what the state's theory is in this case? I'm not. Now, you mentioned on direct examination something about listening to some recordings that the state provided to you. Yes. Okay. Is that the first time you ever listened to those recordings? Yes. Do you know what those recordings are about? There are many, many recordings. Okay. Did they give you all of the recordings? I don't know. I listened to what I was given, but I don't know if there's more. How much time did it take you to listen to the recordings that you were given? Um, 
again, I didn't listen to the entire thing, so mm -hmm. probably about an hour to go through all of the recordings and listen to excerpts of each of them. Of each of them. So you're not aware if the state gave you all of the recordings that they provide, that they have in their possession? I have no idea. Okay. Did they have you listen to any recordings that occurred before April 19th of 2016? I'm uh, sorry, two, yeah, 2016. So I'd have to see the document to remember the exact date on it. I do remember my birthday's in April, so I remember the dates being close to that, but I, I don't remember exactly. Did they ask you to listen to the phone call where Charlie Adelson is talking to Ms. McBanwa about work? I, pro I listened to something. <laughs> so it's fair to say that they only let you listen to portions of the phone calls that they think are important. I was given conversations and I listened to some of them to authenticate voices, but I, I don't know. I imagine they thought it was important for me to listen. That's why I did. Did you listen to a phone call? Ask your question. Don't answer until I rule. Please, ma'am. That's because I have Uh, so the question was, Ms. Adelson, did they have you listen to any phone calls where they, it was a conversation between your brother and your mother, if you were able to identify any conversations like this? I think I did, between, yes. Okay. Now I want to talk about the circumstances surrounding your actual divorce. Okay. Which I believe you said was finalized in 2013, right? Yes. You just left your divorce papers on a mattress of Dan Markell in the house and left town. Is that correct? No. What, how is it that you delivered the divorce papers to him? I called him to let him know that I wanted a divorce. It wasn't the first time I asked for a divorce, but it was the last time. And told him that I would see him when he got home. Not home, but back to Tallahassee. And then I did leave the papers for him, but I didn't leave town. I was still in Tallahassee. Okay. So he was actually aware of the in, like, that you were going to be seeking a divorce before you actually delivered the papers to him? I had asked for a divorce several months earlier. Okay. That's when we started going to counseling. And he told me that if I, if I tried to get divorced from him, that I could leave with the clothes on my back and that he would take the kids and that I would be penniless. And so when I actually asked for a divorce, I thought it best not to be there. So is it fair to say that this was not a mutual thing between the two of you, that Danny did not want a divorce? I don't think he wanted to get divorced. 
Um, how close is your brother's relationship, Charlie Adelson, with your mother, Donna Adelson? I think they're close. Would you characterize their relationship as closer than you are with your mother? No, I wouldn't say that. I mean, I do think they talk more frequently than I do, but I don't think closeness always has to do with the frequency of communication. And you had said on direct that your parents were not happy with Dan Markell's behavior during the divorce. No, they didn't think he was treating me well. And is this just Donna Adelson, your mom, or was it both Donna and Harvey Adelson? I'm sure both of my parents felt that way. Did they ever express those, those feelings to you? Yes. Did they call in names? Yes. Okay. D did one parent do that more than the other, or it was consistent between the two? I think it was consistent between the two. Okay. What kind of names did they call them? I mean, I've had my memory recently refreshed, so I saw things, but my memory is... I don't remember name calling, but I did recently see emails where they they called him names. Now, after the divorce, you started dating I other did. people, right? Um, when is it that you had your first, I, w I wouldn't say serious boyfriend, but your first boyfriend after Dan Marco? Probably within within a month. Okay. When did he if you know, did he start seeing anybody else after the divorce? He did, but I, I don't know when it started. Okay. And is that Amy or was it some other person? I know about Amy, but okay. I don't know if there were other people before Amy. Did you know what, at the time of the murder, do you know what, if any, future plans Dan Markell had? I couldn't really say about his future plans, but I felt like by then he and Amy were pretty serious and he was trying to spend as much time in New York as possible. Do you know if his intention was to, and it's only if you know, it was his intention to remain in Tallahassee or do you know if he was planning to leave the state? I think he always planned on leaving Tallahassee. It was just a question of when. Okay. Do you know why? Did he have an aversion to Tallahassee? or No, just... it, it wasn't an aversion to Tallahassee. Okay. He just, he was a very ambitious person and mm -hmm. so... From the moment we arrived in Tallahassee, he was always looking for a stepping stone toward a better university where he could teach. And he took a very special interest in what he did, which is, a, you know, he's a law professor. Right. He graduated from Harvard, and he studied criminal law. Right, that was his specialty. Okay. And did there come a time where you were dating someone by the name of Jeffrey Lacasse? Yes. You know who that is? I do. Do you remember when you started dating Jeffrey Lacasse? I don't remember exactly, but um, 2013. Okay. Um, do you remember how long you dated him for? I remember it was less than a year, but probably more than six months. Were you dating him at the time leading up to the homicide, which would be July 18, 2014? We broke up a few weeks before Danny was killed, or a week or so. We broke up before Danny was killed. How would you describe your relationship with Jeffrey Lacoste? I mean, I think it took different turns. I'd, I think it was more casual in the beginning, and then it was getting more serious. And then I was feeling more committed to the relationship. And then in, in late June, I just we had this big fight. And after that point, I didn't really want to be with him anymore. Do you know what the fight was about? Do you I remember? Do. I remember what the fight was about. What was it about? He didn't trust me. In terms of he thought other people? He thought, I was, he thought I was cheating on him. Okay. Um, and you said you broke up. When was that? We broke up. It, was, it would have been one of the last weekends in June. So fairly close to when the homicide was occurred. Right. Now, that spring break, which would have been the month of March, mm -hmm. didn't you and Jeffrey Lacoste come down to Miami? We did. Okay. And you stayed with your brother, Charlie? We did. Okay. And do you know at that time who he was dating? I don't. Okay. Does it sound, do you, if, if I say that was when he was dating Catherine Rabano, is that a correct statement or you don't remember? I don't remember. Okay. Do you remember having dinner with Jeffrey Lacoste at a restaurant and 
with your brother and that Kathleen McDonald was, was there? I have a vague recollection of it. Okay. And do you remember if this restaurant had outside seating? We always used to go to the same restaurant, and so I, I know the restaurant had house outside seating. Okay. And when you met Catherine McDonald, Charlie introduced you to her as his girlfriend? Probably. Okay. Definitely as someone he was seeing, right? I don't remember if he used the term girlfriend, but as a, in a romantic kind of way. Okay. Not, a, not as just a friend. And am I characterizing Mr. Uh, Mr. Charlie Adelson correctly when I say, you know, you have said he has lots of girlfriends. I've met lots of girls over the years, which is why it's hard to remember whether I had dinner with one person versus another. Do you know what his thoughts and beliefs are in marriage? Does he not believe in marriage? I don't think he's so pro-marriage, no. Okay. Um, do you know how many times you spent, how many times you met Katie? We talked about the time on the beach, and then we've already now talked about a dinner. I remember vaguely those two. I don't remember any other time. Do you remember the name of the person that was in that picture with you? No. Okay. Does Yindra Velasquez Mascaro sound familiar? No. Okay. Now, you didn't have a really close relationship with Katie, right? No. Okay. Did you know that Katie has two kids? I did. I remember Miss Kowalas. We're, we're not going to get a, a first name. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, Judge, I apologize. Did you know that Ms. McBanwa had children? I did know that. Okay. Did you ever discuss with Ms. McBanwa the details of the divorce that you had before she even knew who your brother was? That wouldn't be possible because I only met her with my brother. Okay. So you didn't talk. Your relationship wasn't a close relationship where you would talk to her about Dan Markell. No. Do you ever remember having a conversation with Ms. McBanwa about Dan Markell and your divorce? It's very possible that I brought it up, mm -hmm. but not nothing stands out. No, not at all. Now, I want to talk to you about the time of the murder, okay? The day before the homicide, all right? Okay. You had talked about your custody situation with Dan Markell, that it was a week on, week off. Is that correct? That's right. And an overnight time. stay oh. switch on a Wednesday. That's my best memory. So it's, it, uh, a better way to describe it would be if it's your week, you have the boys, but on Wednesday night they will sleep at uh, Denmark, stay at, do an overnight sleepover at Denmark Hill. Right. And then return them to you the next day. Or return them to school. And, or, then, and then you pick them up in the evening. Right. So the day of the homicide, do you remember what day of the week that was? I believe it was Friday. Okay. So um, the day before would have been a Thursday. Right. Okay. Do you remember what you were doing that day? I don't. Is there any way that you would have been walking down Trescott Drive with your two sons the day before his murder? No. I, I don't live in walking distance, so there's no reason why I would have been walking down the street. No. You and Mr. Markell weren't on that kind of talking or, or speaking terms where you would be at the Trescott home and he wasn't there. No. Okay. You wouldn't go and take the boys for a walk on Trescott Drive? I, I don't think so, no. Okay. And as far as you knew at that time, the kids, what school were they attending? They went to Creative Preschool. Okay, and when you would drop the kids off at Creative Preschool, do you have to sign them in? You do have to sign them in. Okay, and then, so there should be a record of the days that the boys would have been at the preschool. That's right. What time would you drop the boys off? Do you remember? Is I it an early morning thing, or? I would drop them off in the morning. Um, I don't remember. Maybe it was 8, maybe it was 9. I, oh, but nothing late, like 11. I don't think so. And then what would be the usual time you pick them up in the afternoon? I think it would depend on whether I was teaching or... or if I had court, what I was up to, but my guess is sometime between three and six, I would pick them up. So would it be fair to say that, you know, around 11 o'clock in the morning, the boys would probably be in school on a weekday? That would be right. Okay. Do you know someone by the name of Whitney? I do know Whitney. Who is Whitney? Whitney was a girlfriend of my brother's. Okay. Do you know who introduced uh, Charlie to... Mr. Adelson to, to Whitney? I don't. Do you know how long they were dating? 
I don't. Do you remember when they started dating? I don't remember when they started dating. Okay. <coughs> when did your brother buy you that TV? I remember having the TV in the house on Aqua Ridge. Mm -hmm. So sometime, sometime after the fall of 2012, that's, and then I, sometime between 2012, 2013, something like that. Do you remember pay, making a phone call to Charlie that morning and having a conversation with him without going into the details of that conversation? Which morning? The morning of Danny's murder. Yes. I'm sorry, Judge. Mr. Markell's murder. Do you remember how long you spoke for? I don't remember how long I spoke for. <laughs> Now, you had described your brother as a talker. Is that fair to say? Yeah, I think I described him as a more of a joker than joker. a talker, but he does do you, talk. Do you remember the circumstances under which he made that statement that the state talked about, about hiring a hitman, but instead I got you this TV? Where, who, who else was around when this statement was made? Well, he tends to repeat himself, so he kept repeating that joke because he thought it was funny. Okay, but do you remember the time frame of when that happened? Like, was this way before, you know, during the course of your divorce, or was this after? It would have been when he bought the TV. When he bought the TV. And that would be after the divorce? Well, not after I filed for divorce, right? But okay. not after the divorce was finalized. <coughs> so sometime after, I really don't remember when I got the TV, but maybe sometime after, starting with the fall of 2012, some, sometime around then, but it could have been 2013. Do you know, now your parents' apartment on South Beach, are they still living there? No. Okay, so they moved. They did. At the time, do you know how much their rent was in that apartment? I have no idea. You said they did not own that property? No. Okay. And uh, now you said that you stayed in Tallahassee after the homicide. I, st I stayed for a few days. Okay. And do you recall if Detective Isom tried to call you? After I had left? Before you left, and before you left Tallahassee, but after the memorial service for Mr. Markell? He did not call me before I left Tallahassee, no. Did he try to call you? He called me when I was already on the road, okay. about four hours away from Tallahassee. All right. Did he ever try to talk to you again? No. As a prosecution? When is the, la when is the first time the prosecution reached out to you to speak to you about what happened? I don't remember ever talking with the prosecution. I have a question. Let's go to side bar. Proceed, Your Honor. Okay. Do you know if Detective Isom ever tried to reach out to your parents? I don't think he did. Do you know if Detective Isom ever tried to speak to your brother, Charlie? I don't think he did. Now, 
you are testifying today under a state subpoena, correct? Correct. And that state subpoena gives you immunity for your testimony, right? Yes. Can you explain to the jury, since you're an attorney, what immunity is? Immunity is freedom from prosecution. So that means that anything you say today can't be used against you if the state decides to arrest you later on? The state isn't going to decide to arrest me. <laughs> um, do you know if they consider you a suspect? I don't know. Now, the life insurance policy that the state was asking you about, have you received any money from the life insurance policy from Mr. Markell? I don't know if maybe in the beginning the life insurance that Danny owed me about $100,000 when he died. I do think that his family made that disbursement. I don't know if they paid that through the life insurance policy, but other than that, there's been the life insurance policy is, is money put away for the kids. I've never seen it. Do you, are you, do you have access to that or you have no control over that? I have no control over that. All right. All right, and I have, where did you say, so the, your, your boys are now down in Miami with your mother, correct? At the moment, yes. Okay. And you stopped letting uh, Danny's parent or Mr. Markell's parents see the boys, is that correct? Uh, two years after Danny died, I stopped visitation. Okay, do you have any intention of letting them see their grandchildren again? I, I do, we've actually been in discussion the last few weeks. No further questions, Jeff. Redirect. How many times have Dan's parents been able to see your boys in the last five years? In the last two years after they died, they've been able to see them every time they've asked to see them. Okay, what about the last three years? Since 2016, they have been not been permitted to see the boys. They have not been permitted? That's right. By you? By me, yes. Right, and that's not through lack of trying on their part? No, that's because of what they did. Okay, but they want to see those boys, don't they? They very much want to see the boys. <laughs> All right. And Dan Markell's sister is the, I'm not sure if this is the right word, but the executor of that trust for the boys, is that right? I think she has fiduciary responsibility over the trust for the All boys. All right, thank you. That sounds, that sounds right. Um, did you at one time ha hold that position in Dan's will? Oh, before we got divorced, I probably did. Okay, but sometime after the divorce, he changed that over to the sister. He must have, yes. Okay. And did you initiate proceedings to try to fight that decision that he made to make the sister the executor or the beneficiary, have the fiduciary duty for this money over you? To the disbursement to your children. Can, can you repeat the, can you okay, rephrase so the question? Okay, so did you initiate any type of proceeding at any point to try to contest or fight Dan Markell's sister being appointed as this fiduciary for the life insurance um, for the boys? I don't believe that I did. You did not? I don't remember doing that, no. No further questions. I right, need your other question at this point. If you do, right, Dan, we'll go side far.
Mrs. Adelson, I don't remember what it related to exactly. I mean, I remember you saying this, and one of the jurors had a question about you said your memory had been refreshed about something. What, what did you mean by that? Um, so five over five years have passed since Danny died. And I'm Speak sorry, sorry. Um, so more than five years have passed since Danny died, and a lot of the things that we're talking about today, I just don't remember at all. And so to refresh my memory, to make sure that I could remember things, certain documents were shown to me, emails, legal pleadings from the case, so that I could remember what was happening at that time. Um. One of the jurors was a little confused with the timing. You had said you had a boyfriend and that it was not clear to them whether you said it was a month after your um, separation and filing for a divorce or a month after it was finalized. Sure. So I, um, I started dating someone who was a friend of mine for many years and it didn't become romantic until after I had filed for divorce. So about a month after I filed for divorce, someone who was a friend in my life became more like a boyfriend than a friend. Okay. What, what was wrong with the tele television that had to be repaired? Um, I think one of my kids might have thrown something at it, so there was a crack in the TV. Okay. And why have Mr. Markell's parents not been allowed to see the grandchildren? Um, well, they were allowed to see the grandchildren for two full years, and I used to cook meals for them and arrange play dates. We had sleepovers, and then I found out that um, that Ruth Markell had reached out to a foster care agency to try to place my children with that agency, and I became very worried that they were trying to take my children away from me, and so after that time, I didn't feel a level of trust that they could spend time with the kids. I was afraid they were trying to take them from me. Okay. Follow up, Ms. Uh, Captain. Your reference to the foster care agency, does that have to do with an email that was sent to me from your, your mother-in-law? Yes, it does. All right, that Dan's mother. Yes. And that email was in reference to in the event that you and your parents were arrested in association with this crime, could I please contact that particular agency to assist with the children in the event they have no guardian temporarily until they could get down here from where they reside in Canada. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay, so they were not trying to take your children unless there was an event where you were unable to care for them. But because there's no event in which I would be unable to care for them, that feels like trying to take away my children. Garcia. And this email about you, about there being possible arrests of you and your family, that came right after Catherine McBannell was arrested, right? I don't remember exactly the timeline of that. Okay, thank you. Further, Ms. Captain? No, All right, you can step down. Do we need to keep this witness any further? Yes. But in need or any further? Okay. Mike Bannon, one brief moment, Your Honor. Hold on a second, Ms. Adams. Under subpoena, Your Honor. All right. They, they, you remain yeah. under their yeah. subpoena. Your Honor, right. Ms. Adelson has a flight tonight at right. 7 p.m. May she return home and right. You can communicate home. with her about any arrangements if you need her to come back, but she's free to go at this point. Yeah, we reach out to her attorney when we need to talk to her. All right. Uh, last thing you're going to get this afternoon is probably not, not what you want to hear, but it was a little legal lesson that one of the jurors were 